All right, so Paul, we just kind of saw that in 70, 80 years, not a lot of change in terms of the technology that has gone into these and the design of them, right? That's right. I mean, they're by, by and large using the same sorts of fuels uh, and they have the same, they have the turbo pumps and fuel tanks and- And the techniques even in them are kind muscles. of similar. Yeah. Yeah. So um, why do people design new rockets the whole time? And if you look at the cost, this is the cost to put one kilogram into low earth orbit by yep. a dedicated launch. Okay. And we're going from 1960s through to today. Yep. It's all adjusted for inflation. And what you can see is that actually the price per kilo hasn't, well, if we exclude that corner down here, yep. we'll talk about much more in a second. If you exclude that corner down there, you're not Everything is above, yeah, 5000 to <laughs> over $100,000 per kilogram. Yeah, so maybe sitting at average maybe twenty thousand yep. dollars per kilogram, and it's not really seemed to be getting any better. And 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 we have different rocket sizes, so big, small, medium, and there, there's no difference there, right? Well, the big ones are usually going to be less, they're cheaper to, yep. per kilogram. That's right. Uh, like Saturn V, because it's, they're often too. I mean, you can argue why don't we keep the Saturn V going? It's one of the cheapest, but it's just too big for most purposes. That's right. Um, but the space shuttle was supposed to replace it. It's actually drastically more expensive. Things got way worse. Um, and generally speaking, the small ones are a bit more expensive per kilo than the medium-sized ones. Yep. Uh, but nonetheless, there's no real trend here. Yeah. And again, this is in 60, 70 years of development. So in some sense, that's not surprising because the rockets are burning the same fuels yep. and the laws of chemistry and physics haven't changed over that time. Yep. But th then, so you could argue up till then, yes, that's what you'd expect. But then look what happened here. You got Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Yep. Uh, so one company, SpaceX, Elon Musk's company. Yep. We'll talk a bit about the Elon Musk controversies in a minute. Um, and that's brought the price down per kilo drastically. I mean, not just 20% no. better, it's, you know, it's five, 10 times yeah. better or more. And hopefully the uh, Starship, which we'll, we'll, we'll the projection will be even drastically yeah, exactly. lower than any of this. That's right. So the question we've got to address is, why did things not change for so long? And why are they changing now? Yep. Despite the fact that the technology from here to here yeah, as I say, that didn't look dramatically different from the V2 or even some of the bits of the Saturn V. And this recent dramatic drop in price is, of course, leading to a recent dramatic increase in the number of launches. So it's in the past kind of decade or so. Yes, from 2010 to 2022, this is the number of launches. And what you can see is that uh, um, back in 2010, uh, there was a certain yep. number of launches per year. Yep. And it was dominated by the European Space Agency's Ariane, Ariane 5 rocket. Yep. And then with the uh, others and the uh, Russian, Russian protons, exactly. yeah. which was actually marketed by the European Space Agency. The European Space Agency had a sort of monopoly on yeah. launches for a long time. And it kept the same, kept the same. And then suddenly, whoop, yes. up goes the Falcon 9, but, SpaceX. I mean, I mean, even at this peak here, it's 10 and 2022 was 50. That, that's more than a few of these years combined. And we're filming this early in 2023 and already for this year, the race, yes. it seems to be continuing to climb very fast. Exactly. So something has changed yep. and we need to understand what. Okay. So let's, to do this, we're gonna have to look a bit at the history. Okay. So this whole thing starts with the German V2 rockets, uh, which pioneered so many of these technologies. That's right. Uh, I've got a family history about this, that uh, the one thing my father remembers of the Second World War is when one of these things landed down the end of his street um, and blew out all the windows in his house. And the thing you remember, having been seven years old at the time, was they had this bowl of sugar. And uh -huh. this was so precious because of rationing in World yes. War II Britain. And when the windows blew out, all the glass came into the sugar. And <laughs> didn't this anymore. It's, it's what you remember about these yeah. things. Um, and so th it was not a very useful military weapon. That's right. What, um, but when you pair it with an atomic bomb, it becomes unstoppable intercontinental yeah. ballistic missile. That's right. And so that's what people came up with. And then the real thing that drove a lot of the history was the mad panic that yes. happened to the Americans in the 50s and early 60s. Mm. When you got Sputnik 1 launched by the Russians in yep. uh, 1957. That's right. This is basically a ballistic missile. Yeah. You just remove nuclear warhead and insert Sputnik 1. And this caused a massive national freak out. People would look in the space and see giant red stars and red bears. Yes. And the, the, in a rational panic, because it wasn't actually that militarily significant. That's right. Uh, but and then you've got Yuri Gagarin being launched again on a ballistic missile. Because a, a person was able to go on said missile and survive. 
And in fact, the reason why the Russians were ahead here was that their rocket, they couldn't build the miniaturized hydrogen bombs. Uh, and so yeah. they had to build really large rockets. So it was relatively easy to remove warhead and insert Yuri Gagarin. Exactly. Whereas the American ballistic missiles were much smaller That's because right. they could miniaturize their atomic weapons much yes. more. And so it was much harder to insert Alan Shepard. And in fact, uh, the Redstone rocket is pretty much just... V2. Inter- yeah, yeah, exactly. It is the, I mean, built by the same people that built the V2, <laughs> uh, and more or less a straight evolution of that German World War II. That's right. And so, uh, oh my goodness, we are freaking out. So I, I guess the question in, is, what then happened next? How did they stop freaking out? What was the next goal? 